So hello, happy Valentine's Day for those who celebrate. Um, happy Tuesday to everybody. So happy to be here. This is my first time on campus, which I cannot believe because I've worked with a number of students um, from your school over the years. Um, and I can't believe it's taken this long, but COVID got in the way too. So I know a lot of things are happening now. People are coming back to campus. So it's nice to see. I'm still very COVID careful, so I have a mask at all times, but glad to be here. So let me, before I get started, I kind of want to know who's in the room. We don't, I don't want to go around and do name by name, but I do want to know kind of what your areas of concentration. I want to know who I'm talking to as far as what you're interested in. History major. History, okay, and perfect. Professor Payton, which is why I'm here, <laughs> Professor Payton. Um, okay, so I don't want to do person by person, but who's interested in being in news, going into news, okay? Who's interested in going into entertainment, some aspect of entertainment, okay? Who's interested in reporting on entertainment? Who's interested in creating film, TV shows, things like that? Who wants to be in front of the camera? Okay. Who wants to produce? Who wants to write? Okay. Who does, wait, what am I leaving out? Radio? Who's interested in radio? I love, that is a very high hand. <laughs> Me? Pot and podcasting. Yes, I'm, my brain is like, in pot, who's interested in podcasting? And you can be multifaceted. I just kind of want to know as I'm talking, like, what the interest, am I leaving anything out that there's an interest in from the world of media? Okay, that is news specifically. And when we get towards the end, I am gonna leave you guys time to ask questions. Okay, okay, so hold on to that. Don't forget it. So we'll answer questions at the very end, okay? Um, and I am gonna leave time for that because I'm gonna talk today about social media specifically but because you all are interested in other, th other things and I work in so many different areas of media, I wanna leave you time because I think it's so important for you all to be able to have access and have, you know, ask questions that are specific to you and where you are right now. So we'll leave a lot of time for that. So I'm not gonna talk very long, but if you want me to expound on anything from social media, let me know. Okay, so I don't have to say anything about myself because of that fabulously long bio. <laughs> <laughs> my production assistant recently edited it, so I, this is my hearing, I'm hearing it for the first time, but it, I'm pretty great, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay. So yes, um, Clark Atlanta University, I went through local news, Northwestern, started out in local news as a reporter, anchor, you know, once I got to BET, I was like, why am I doing this news thing? It's so fun working the BET red carpet. I think I want to go into entertainment. So I just took a turn. And then I was in radio for a long time, doing mostly entertainment, but, but because I had those news chops, I could still work, I could still do other things, but I was learning how to do entertainment. Um, and then I got back into TV from radio, specifically doing entertainment and lifestyle TV for a long time. Uh, but then I started doing podcasting, and I love having my own thing, which I think is really important no matter what you do, whether it's a blog, a podcast, something like that. Always think about having something that's your own um, because the business is very fickle. And even if it's a production company, something, the business can be very fickle. And so you always want to have something of your own. And that way, once you go into the business, as you move from company to company or build your own, if you build your own company, it's not an issue. But as you move from company to company, it's good to come in and say, hey, I've got this podcast, and so I want to make sure that I can keep doing it. Or I have this blog, and I want to make sure that I can keep doing it, okay? Um, so that's really important. So I moved round and round. And then I, like I said, when I got into entertainment and started doing television, after a while there, I realized that I loved creating content. And I tried to do a number of different things with blogs and podcasts and things like that. But then once I became a vegan five years ago, I was like, that's it. Vegan is one of the fastest growing businesses in the world. Um, and a lot of the fastest growing group of people that are becoming vegans are black Americans. So I was like, well, 
that's my people. So, <laughs> so I started Vegan Sexy Cool, and it is a lifestyle brand that helps people realize that eating vegan and living vegan it's really not that hard. It really is not heavy lifting. You can still be absolutely fabulous and be vegan. You don't have to sacrifice and give up great clothes, great makeup and food and drinks just to be vegan. You can have it all. So that's Vegan Sexy Cool. So that's a little bit more about me. <clears throat> but when Professor Peyton asked me to come, she was like, well, what do you want to talk about? And I was like, you know, I think the thing I, I've worked with interns from Clark Atlanta University and from here for, for the past 10 years. And I still work with interns all the time. And the one thing that I find that a lot of them don't focus on enough unless they're marketing students is social media. No matter what you are doing, you should be polishing up your social media skills because chances are social media will be the gateway to your dream job it will get your foot in the door. Now, not saying that your skills and everything else don't matter, but for example, if you want to work in TV, right? And let's say you want to work at Good Morning America or ESPN. Well, chances are right out of school, it's going to be hard to get a job that, you know, gives you an opportunity to really learn and grow. If you get your foot in the door with social media, now you're in. You're interacting with hosts, producers, the whole team. You know what's going on with the show. It's a great way to get your foot in the door. And then you're in meetings and all of those things. And so let's say you don't necessarily want to do social media. You want to be on camera or you want to be a producer. Or you want to be an editor. Now you're in the door. And you can go and meet those people and start to make the kind of relationships that you want to make. I'm a big believer in if this is what you want to do, do this. Don't do other things. Once you graduate, if you get into banking or something else, it is highly unlikely that you will find your way back into media, right? So what you want to do is sacrifice now. Sacrifice while you're young. You know what I mean? Because it, 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 it feels glamorous, but it's not early on. My first job in TV, I made $17,000 a year. Did I make that much? I think so. Yeah, I did. And then when I got to my second job, I have to say this, because I was so green. When I got to my second job, the news director, he asked me in the interview, he said, well, how much, did you, how do you, how much do you make on, this, on your current job? I was like, 17,000. He was like, well, that's what you'll make here. So I got to my second, but that's because I wasn't savvy enough to know about contracts and all that. That's a whole other conversation though. But it is good to know those things before you start interviewing and t taking on jobs to know about contracts and all of those things. But I, I, I could go on and on about that, but I won't. But let's talk about social media. So there was recently an article in the New York Times, and please look it up, where, it's talking, where it talks about how so many businesses are now looking for people to help them with TikTok. And they're specifically looking for college students because of the fresh perspective that people in your age group can bring to a company. And it's various companies, it's not media companies, it's this particular company in this article was a clothing brand. And they had one of their college creators as they called them, it was an intern, she created some video, I didn't see it because I was reading the article, but it was about some kind of, some piece of clothing, an art, article of clothing, and she put herself in it, so she was starring in the video. It got 1.5 million views and gained the company to 20,000 new followers just from that one video. So needless to say, they are loving her, but she's just an intern, right? So as you're thinking, as you're thinking about, okay, I wanna be at ESPN, I wanna be here, what you want to do is fill your resume with positions that give you the skills that are going to take you places. And what is social media? Content creation. What is media? Content creation. It's the same thing. It's just different types of content, right? So if you're a filmmaker, if you're a writer, if you want to be on camera, if you want to produce, you can do all of that on social media, right? So if you, so if, if let me pick a company. Uh, the, 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 let's say, um, 
I'm so careful with my companies. Let's say Bank of America. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the politics of the company before I throw it out there, but let's say Bank of America. Let's say Bank of America, even though I don't want you to go into banking, but if their corporate office needs someone to do social media, consider that job because you're creating content for them, right? You're shooting video, you're writing, you're, you know, you're doing all the, you're editing, you're doing all these things that you all are learning how to do, but for them. It's a foot in the door at a company, and so you can take those skills. Look what I did for Bank of America. I, instead of working as a bank teller, right? I worked for Bank of America in their social media department. I did this, this, and this. Take those skills, go somewhere else, right? Go to that company. So it could be a foot in the door to the company you want to work for, like a Good Morning America, or you can go to a company that has nothing to do with media but work in that department, right? So social media, I think, is really, really important when you're in college to really lean into. Now, you may say, I hate social media. I, like, who loves, who does not like posting on their own social media? You don't, you're okay, like, eh. So the one thing I'll tell you about social media in the way that I'm talking about is not about you, right? It's about learning how to do it for someone else. So even if you don't, if you're like, eh, I'm not a social media person, you still want to lean into it. You still want to learn how to do it for someone else, right? That's, that is like the key. And I want to tell you some ways to do that. So if you are thinking about doing social media for a company, here are the things that you really want to learn how to wrap your head around. Now you can either take courses if you have some electives and it's you know if social media is not what you want to major in like because that's marketing right but if that's not what you want to do then you can take free courses online you can take a class as an elective you can kind of find some way to lean into marketing because when you're doing social media for another for a brand let's say for another company you want to be able to understand what their goals are as far as reaching their audience who's their audience you know, what are their pillars of what's important to this company, right? So you want to understand those things. You don't have to major in marketing to wrap your head around what a com what's important to a company and how they want to reach that, uh, their audience. You can also talk to that company. Okay, like for Vegan Sexy Cool, if you're doing social media for me, you don't have to be a vegan. I would love it if you were but you don't have to be. You just have to understand what veganism is. I'm an ethical vegan, so that means I'm an animal activist. What it, you know, why am I vegan? Why are people vegan? What do we eat? What do we not eat? You know what I mean? What, all those things, what other things are vegan aside from food? You know, a lot of people think veganism is just food, but it's not just that, it's so much more. It's every, every part of my life. So you, all you have to do is get to know what it is to be vegan, but also what it is to be vegan sexy cool. Once you figure that out, you know, that, that's the marketing. Who am I trying to reach, right? That's the marketing side of it. That's all you need to know. Then you need the skills. You need to know how to create social media. You need to know how those apps work, right? You need to know what IG Reels are. You need to know, you know, how to create them, how to add music, how to do this and that. And I say that because I, you know, I'm struggling on social media myself, but which is why I always turn to interns, right? But you, if those, if you know how to use TikTok, you know what I mean? If you know how to use, I don't even know if y'all are on Twitter, but Snapchat, I don't know if you're on that either. It's, it, you know, but if Facebook is probably ancient to you guys, but a lot of companies are like, hey, we are still on Facebook. And Facebook is still very, very relevant. So it's not just understanding how to use what's most popular like TikTok, but it's also understanding how to use Facebook and everything that's out there that a lot of companies are using because they will look to you to not only create things, but give them ideas. What should we do about this? We wanna you know, convey this. So come in with those ideas, but you need to wrap your head around how do I create content? They're going to look to you to say, well, what, how do I, you know, and they're going to want that help. And you're going to come in like, sit down, let me show you how to do this because you have an understanding of it. Even if it's not something that you love, you want to have an understanding of all those apps. Okay. So marketing, understanding of how social media works, two things. The other thing 
you want to bring skills to the table. Social media means being able to take incredible pictures, right? Being able to edit, being able to shoot, being able to write copy, right? To go in captions, being able to, you know, come up with, you know, clever titles and things like that. You want to understand how to do those skills, you know? So that's what all of you are learning now, but think about it from a social media perspective. If you're going to go in to a company and be their TikTok expert, right? You're gonna, they may want you to, they're not gonna want you to have to go out and hire a photographer and hire a writer. They're gonna want you to be able to know how to do graphics and everything all on its own. So you wanna learn the skills that it takes to maintain a social media account, to have a presence and to post. Um, and then you wanna understand how to do graphics. I mentioned Canva, that's free. There are probably tons of others out there. Learn how to do graphics, really important. I'm constantly telling my interns or my assistant, just create, sometimes I'll say to them, just create something. Send me five options and I'll just pick what I like, right? So that is very helpful that you kind of have your own thought process of creativity. That's the only other thing that you need. You wanna be very, very creative. This is where you can shine on social media and that's why those of you who don't necessarily lean into social media this is the time to test it all out. Well, not everything, but you know, something that future employers won't be upset about. So this is your time to really, if I, I encourage all of you, if you are not leaning into your social media other than, hey, I was here, hey, I ate this, hey, think of yourself as a brand. Start thinking of yourself as a brand. What do you want future employers the world, people who may hire you to see of you, to know of you, create something and put it out there, edit something, put it out there, put some, you know, write some great cap captions, take great pictures, let your social media speak for you, kind of like be part of your resume, an extension of your resume, because what do employers do? They look at your social media, they look at your resume and they all look at your social media. And so you, only, you don't only want to avoid putting risque or questionable things on your social media. You guys, because you want to be in media, you have to think of your social media as an extension of your resume, period. And so you've got to start thinking about it differently. Let that be your canvas. Try, and, and when I talk about creativity, here's the place to do it. Shoot a short film, you know what I mean? Make a skit that SNL might like. You know what I mean? Create killer, um, you know, uh, what are, you know, graphics and things like that. Like do, show your, uh, do lives and show your interviewing skills on IG Live with fellow students. And they, you know, this is the time to show them that maybe you don't have that internship or opportunity for you to get on the hand training when it comes to being on camera and all those things. But you've got social media, you've got YouTube, you've got all those things where you can create shows, you can create, you know, so many things, podcasts included, on your own, and when you go into a job, you know that you can say, well, take a look at my social media and look at what I've been doing. Oh, go ahead. You. I was gonna ask you, is there, I don't know, because I know when I post for my stuff, mm -hmm. I always had, had, like the company I work for. Right. I don't know if, I don't know how ethical it is, if you want, like say I'm, I put something, a student tweets something that they think is a good piece, and they want somebody, No, it's not bad form because one thing I say about this business, especially when you're students, these are when you can make mistakes and be bold. This is when people love to help students, they love students. So now's the time to, you know, do that. Hey, Robin Roberts, look at the, look, hey, at Robin Roberts, look at, it, I mean, it's, it, it's kind of bold to do it, but you want to get their attention. You want Good Morning America to see it. So if you do something that you think is worthy of getting their attention, like you don't want to do it every day, but if you put together some really great content and you're going to post it and you want to work at ESPN, tag them. Let them know. I see no, I don't think that that's bad form. Because I think that on the other end, there are people who monitor all the hashtags. Like yes. Yes. That's the way to get attention. 
Yeah, it really, really is. It could be a game changer for you because everybody's on social media in some, well, not almost everybody, in some form or fashion, and a lot of people are just going through. So if you learn how to hashtag at someone, yes, someone from that company could see your information uh, or your post, I should say, and really take a look at everything you've been, cr been creating and really lean into it. So, I mean, it, it really does make a difference. I mean, I have a friend who is a producer on this new film that um, Monique, the actress and comedian, is in called The Reading. Have you guys seen this on BET Plus? Um, it's a new thriller kind of movie. It really is good. But they were doing, they were kind of hurting with their social media campaign because even though it's on BET Plus, BET Plus did a partnership with them to air the film. They still weren't sure what to do with their social media. And they're out there trying to promote a film. So imagine if you, right, you want to make film, you, you want to make films or you want to work in the film industry, if they, if you could somehow let people know that you're out there making films or available for that kind of thing by your content, right, then they could find you to work on something like that. Or you could apply, you could go to BET Plus and say, hey, I see you've got films coming up. Can I, this is where I want to intern and work on this. This is what I intern and work on that. With so many companies, it can really make a difference. So, with that said, I wanna answer any questions as far as social media is concerned. Let's specifically talk about social media for a second, and then we'll shift into other questions that you may have about media. Now, how many of you guys are on TikTok? Like, you have an account. How about, <laughs> how about Instagram? Okay, Facebook, okay, okay, uh, YouTube, okay, what am I, Snapchat? Oh, that's more than I thought. Uh, what am I leaving out? Oh yeah, that, that, it, Twitter. Yeah, I'm on the fence about Twitter, so y'all, you still, <laughs> see, I'm like, I'm like with Twitter and Elon Musk and that whole thing, I'm kind of like, I don't know how long, much longer I'm gonna be on Twitter, but we'll see. And then TikTok, you know, you keep hearing these stories that TikTok is gonna go away, that they're gonna, um, well, that Congress is thinking about looking at limiting uh, the US access after these balloons, but even before that, these Chinese balloons that were shot down and all this kind of stuff. And so I was, I'm, I've been, I have a TikTok account, but I'm kind of slow, cause I'm like, I don't know if I wanna invest my time in this and it's about to go away, go away. But then I think about Tabitha Brown, who from one TikTok post got millions of views and the rest is history. So, you know, we'll see about that. Okay, so you all, so when is the last time you guys posted something that was not about, you know, oh, I'm at this concert, but just con about your content of things that you're creating? whether it's your podcast, a film you're working on, something you edited. When's the last time you posted, like who has posted something in the last four weeks that has to do with content that you're creating? Okay, Terry, put your hand in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Okay, it should be everybody. Can I ask you what it was? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I like getting to like sports content and things like of that nature. So like I posted on my TikTok, like this is a simple, um, like kind of question, like question who I was with at the moment. Yeah. Like I, right, as I said, I want to get into sports specifically basketball. Mm -hmm. um, so I asked, just simple question. All right, who do you feel is the best player in the league right now? And I just made a video simply just off that question. Oh, I love that. See, that's fantastic. Who else raised their hand about content? Now that everybody's going to be like, I didn't say anything. Yeah, tell me a little bit about, um, so you, what do you want to do in sports specifically? Um, so my thing is, I don't, I'm kind of like still, figuring things out, but I like, my main thing right now is just I really want to be the, the most versatile, I guess. I want to be able to edit, and like, I, I'm into video editing specifically, okay. but I want to be able to edit podcasts, I want to be able to edit news packages, highlight packages when it comes to sports, interviews, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that, that's right, as of right now, I'm just like trying to build on anything I can. Okay. But I do kind of want to specify sports, um, whether it's man on the street, um, talking to people, whether it's highlight packages and just news packages and all um, interviews as well. So. 
Okay. Okay, I like that. And and what's the plan after you graduate? Do you, I mean, what's the what's the dream job? The dream job. <laughs> I love this side. Um, that's a, that's the thing about it. It's, I don't know if it's necessarily a dream, a specific dream job. I just want. I know I want to work in media, and um, that was kind of the reason I came back to school too, because I took a break for a while. Yeah. I came back because I realized, yo, I'm, I'm really into media, and it's something I want. It, yeah. Where specifically, like the specific company and job, um, it's still iffy and I'm still yeah. living on that. But. Yeah. Yeah, I have a, a good friend who, um, I don't know if you guys saw ABC's ongoing special, Soul of a Nation. So she's, she just won an Emmy for directing. But when I, I worked with her years ago when I was at BET, she was our main editor. But she always wanted to direct. You know, she started her own production company, and so she can shoot, she can edit, and now she's directing. She still edits for ABC, but because she was at ABC as an editor, and she's been editing for them for a while, she managed to network her way onto Soul of a Nation, and then she got to direct an episode, or no, I'm, well, yeah, an episode, and now she just won an Emmy for it. So yeah, I mean, I like that you're versatile and you're open um, with what you want to do, but yeah, I mean, I love that you're putting content up that reflects what you're interested in. So I would say keep doing that. I mean, you just never know. I mean, a podcast about sports or just keep when things are happening. Yeah. Okay. He's like, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Okay. That's what I, who else is posting their content on? I saw some other hands. This, you got this. Let me tell you something. What you want to get rid of like today, but definitely by the time, is shyness. Remember when she was saying, and I was like, don't forget about Tom Joyner. You cannot be in this business and be shy and hold back. And when somebody's in front of you, whether it's me or the other speakers, you want us to remember you. So you want to, every hand should go up, have something to say, you know what I mean? Even if it's the wrong, don't worry about it being the wrong thing. I mean, don't get crazy. But you know, don't let making a mistake keep you from speaking up. You know what I mean? Put your hand up, say, and I may say, well, that's not the kind of content I'm talking about. But what else do you, like, speak up. Don't be shy this day forward. You can't be in this business and be shy. I mean, you can be an introvert, but you can't be shy. You have, when you're in a room, because the competition, and I don't say this to scare you or discourage you, there's so many people who want to do exactly what you want to do, exactly what you want to do. And the only thing between them and you is who wants it more? Who's hungrier? I don't care where they went to school. I don't care what internships they had. Who wants it more? And if you're hungry and you're not shy, come on. So let me ask you again. Who raised their hand before about putting, con putting content? Okay, you in the back, thank you. Um, so I started a new Instagram like four weeks ago. I've gotten like five K views so far. It's food, Kayla's Cravings it's called. So I post daily, I like to do polls twice a day, I do hashtags, I'm trying to get noticed. I posted a uh, snack wrap to back. I got McDonald's too, at me. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the restaurants are reposting my stuff. Nice. I have 150 followers. Ah. So I'm off to a good start, I think. I love that. So are you doing, you're doing this on Instagram, TikTok, where are you doing it? I love that. So what's the goal? What's your major, what do you? So media, so I started with like, a passion of food. I love posting food. Everyone's what's up. What is that? Where is that? So it's like I would love to just make a page and yeah. How's your photography? I like doing that. I love yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to do reels and uh, yeah. See, I love that. And do you know how many people I run across, myself included, that are like, oh, I got to shoot more food. I got to figure out how to put my food content. I mean, I make great vegan food every day. But, you know, is the lighting right? You know, all that kind of stuff. So that's good. Do you want to get into content creation specific? Like, do you want to get into social media? Yeah, I'm considering it, yeah. I'm unsure, so yeah. Okay, why are you unsure? I just want to unpack this. Content creating, but at the same time, I don't know. It's, I'm not dead set on anything yet. Okay. Yeah, I have a... So we had a videographer when I was with the NBC show that I worked for in New York Live 
who she shot everything. She was a great videographer, but her passion was food photography. Well, it was photography, but also food photography, right? She eventually left and now she works independently and makes a lot of money working for restaurants and chefs, helping them to create content. She shoots photographs for them. You know, she does video shoots all over the world. Um, and if you talk to me after, I'll give you her social media so you can follow her. Her name is Katherine Sheldon, but I'm not sure what her social media handles are, but she's incredible. And she, you know, she, as a photographer and editor, you know, came up in the building, but her passion was food and working in that world. And now she's using those skills, those media skills to work where she wants to work. So, you know, I'm happy to hear that because the food thing, knowing how to take great photography, knowing how to be creative, knowing how to edit, knowing how, knowing how to shoot video is just so key. You just want to know that anyway. I saw a hand over here. Or... <laughs> yes. Uh, so I have a YouTube channel. Uh, okay. It's like basically politics, uh, like relating to the getting toward the Muslims yeah. uh, demographic, like combating Islamophobia or the issues that Muslims are facing. So it's like global news, like from like, Palestine, from like India, uh, from France, everywhere. Nice. Uh, so it's like, for now, like I'm doing like only like the voiceovers, like, like, uh, and like, that's pretty much it, like creating uh, videos, short videos, like two, three minutes videos on YouTube. Is it, is it, um, just so I can be familiar, is it, are you putting news out there kind of thing, or is it more opinion, like what is it, if you... It's, it's, it's not just news, like a commentary, like opinions also, like, okay. uh, um, what like what's the problem with this like how we can combat it and this yeah not just a plain news i love that and i want to i want to ask you this but just as inspiration for everybody else why did you decide to start why did you decide to do youtube why not a why not put short clips on instagram why not start start a podcast why did you choose youtube because like i'm not on other social media apps like tiktok i, I never install any other apps only twitter and youtube right. Uh, but I can try. I can yeah. make like shorts on YouTube also and other places also. Uh, but uh, that's like was like I, like I spent a lot of time on YouTube, so that's, that's, that's that was where I, yeah that's where you were. And what's the goal with that? I mean, do you do you want it to grow and become? Do you would you do you want to monetize it or is this just a hobby or what are you doing with that? I did like. Uh, I'm not that far from monetizing it. Okay. Uh, uh, and I think like you asked me about the dream job is going to be like investigative journalism. Yeah. Uh, but in the form of short, short documentaries. Yeah. Like going places, uh, like Afghanistan, like Ukraine. Like that's what my final job is like to be on on the ground uh, and then report uh, stories, uh, personal stories, like the main trick, the okay. the inspiring stories about the people like in Ukraine or, or anywhere and like the and plus the investigative journalism also. Yeah. And from a short documentary. So I love how, that. Many, how many what's your engagement on your channel? Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's reaching forty thousand views. That's fantastic. Two hundred and ten subscribers so far. Well you got and do we do we I, I, I can't remember if you said that do we see your face? No, it's just like the voiceover. I have a separate channel that in in my language that I use like Use my face yeah. for like the country, back in my country. Okay. Uh, but for this one, uh, in the future, I can like uh, start making uh, like short documentaries. I can appear in it. Yeah. Uh, but for right, right now, like I started like a few months ago, so I'm just doing the voiceover, like picking the clips from the social media, yeah. Twitter, and then uh, putting it on the YouTube. Do you want to be in the dream job on camera? You want to be an investigative journalist as a producer, or as a yeah, get your face out there. You have a face and a voice for, I mean, go, you know, I understand what's working and you've got a formula that's working, but on that channel, you know, maybe every once in a while show your face or, um, you know, maybe on Instagram, maybe you just test it out and, and mix using your face a little bit more. Yeah, but I, I love hearing that. I think you're really on to something. No, you're doing it. <laughs> I mean, 40,000, that's amazing. That's great. Okay, so, yes. All right, I was considering not saying this just because it's not really, I have a page 
that is not family appropriate, but I have a lot of engagement on it. I have 200,000 followers on Facebook, and I have stuff that have, has gone kind of like viral or whatever. Um, so I know how to like do this stuff. I have like a large following. I don't think it's something I could put on a resume. Um, it's, it's, you know, memes and, and stuff and, and jokes. I do it anonymously. I don't want people to know that it's me. Um, and the, you know, it's not necessarily something I'm really looking to do, but it's a huge part of, I like adding humor into the things that I like to do. So I started a, a podcast in, um, Professor Smith's class about, um, called people who suck because <laughs> there's a lot of them it's yes, gonna be there it, there's so many episodes i can do but um essentially elon musk was one. the what was that elon musk, elon musk. i did elon musk yeah. i did queen elizabeth yeah. i'm gonna be doing ron DeSantis. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> so there's there's just so much content with it and i'm i'm really i follow the news like really closely the thing is um I know that sometimes when we make jokes about these things, um, you know, specifically like with my brand, super far left, like really far left. Yeah. And I know even with my own family, I can't show them this content. The same way I can't show probably normal people the content that I post and make memes about. Right. Um, I don't know how to move forward with, with something like that. I haven't even posted on the other account because I am terrified that an employer is going to like find out that I run this page <laughs> and they're going to be like, do you, what, what is this? Right. Um, I, that's like my, my main concern The like I said, I have a lot of engagement on it. So I know that if I were to maybe start something else, I, I know how to like get the algorithm and, and I know how to like get stuff going. Um, but the, in the politics sense, when I talk about these things, I try to make it humorous. I try to make it educational. Um, and that's that's something that I know not all employers are going to appreciate. Well, what, what is it that you let's let's put that to the side, right? What do you what do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to be on camera? Do you want to be um, a host? Do you want to be a, a producer? Do you want to do doc? Like, what do you want to do aside from that? Let's put a pin in that just for a second. Um, I really would like to do um, podcasting or some kind of blog okay. um, where I can talk about very specific topics. I'm really good at research and I'm really good at, you know, piecing things to, together to kind of create a story with it. Um, I, I want to go the politics route, I think. And that might be a little difficult because if you have the wrong politics in a certain place, that will completely turn them off to you. Let me say this. The Daily Show is probably waiting for you. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I think I'm further left than the Daily Show. But, the but Daily still, show. Yeah. but still, but yeah, still, the Daily show right? Is well. Even if you, you it's, I mean, two things I will say: if you want to work for somebody else, you are going to probably have to, you know, a little bit. It doesn't mean you have to compromise. Your your views can be your views, but at least comedy, politics, extreme left, like. That's your, that's your, those are your people, right? And so to, to, to get an, to, like to me, your goal should be at least to get an interview there, at least to get an internship there, right? Doesn't mean that that has to be where you land forever, but at least to see something like The Daily Show and there's so many other um, media organizations, whether it be a blog or something like that, that fits what you're talking about. That's comedy, you know, and, and the everything. Onion, that's the onion. So that's actually it's funny that you mentioned the Daily Show because I, I do like John Stewart. I do agree with him about a lot of things. And when I think of like these, you know, like the 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 Daily Show and, and Trevor Noah and um, uh, even even Stephen Colbert, at least like back in the day, so watch right. all the time when I was younger. I I would love to do that. That is like my dream thing. But you can also do your own thing, right? You can also continue to cultivate what you have. And I mean, with the following that you have, you can monetize what you have. I mean, you could just be bold and say, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna figure, you could really dig in, have your, you know, say, forget other employers. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build this. You know what I mean? I'm going to put my face on it 
and I'm going to build this. It could be, doesn't have to be maybe the, what'd you say, Instagram page, but it could be the podcast where you are more of a personality and that could, you can still keep that private for a while if you want to, but still build it. But I feel like since you have such a strong voice and a strong opinion about things, being a host that's opinionated is probably a good direction for you to go in. You know, so you're not this frustrated producer that's, you know, or... I did apply for um, the Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Um, that's not exactly the, the... I would rather the Daily Show. Um, however, I figured that would be a like good experience for yeah, something like... it would be. Learning It'd how to be a, a host. Taste. Yeah, I would try to contact, connect with all those types of, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, you know, The Tonight Show, all of those that do politics humorously, you know, I would try to connect with those, like, just find the contacts, send your, I wouldn't send your resume, but just try to find people. I'm not big on blindly sending resumes. I think you need to find a contact. I mean, yeah. I don't know, maybe old school. I, I don't need to have a I resume. worked with someone, so we had a, a roundtable event with Eva McKen, she's from CNN. I was able to network with her and she added me to her network on LinkedIn and she told me, I'm like very afraid to just like, start messaging random people, but I know I'm not supposed to be. When you're a student, do it, do it. Now is the time. All you have to say, hey, I'm a student, you know, blah, 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 blah. blah. And people like will, too, yes, like people will yeah. feel like, oh, let me help them out. Let me, you know what I mean? So take it, everybody might not do it, but don't be discouraged. Keep using the student card. Yeah. Yeah. Just like explain how that is, or how you can kind of get that out of you. It it is just, just kind of, and I've even had to adopt this of just adopting the mentality of just if you're gonna fail, fail big. Try it, do it. You know, put it out there. Take the chance. That's the thing. As long as it's not you know, hurting anyone, harming anyone. Um, and, you know, depending on what your parents feel, you know what I mean? <laughs> as long as you're not harming anyone, if you're being creative, give it a try. You know what I mean? Just try it. it this, and this is the time now. This is the time to really lean into your creativity and put those things out there. And you'll see by the responses that you get, ask for feedback from your professors, from mentors, you know, get the feedback, but just, just do it. I mean, I can't say it enough, just try. Just put it out there. There's no room, you don't have time to be shy. There's too much competition. You just don't have time. So if you even, you're like, it might be a good idea, but try it, just try it. You got a question. Oh, yeah, sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know in business. Yes, it is. Because if you know anybody, it's true. Yeah, that's why networking is key. That's why networking is key. That's why in moments like this, being remembered. I mean, how many times have you all had speakers and when it was over, you went up and introduced yourself and said, hey, can I follow you on social media? Or hey, here's my business card. Because some kind of way to connect to them. Hey, can I get your information so I can follow? Oh, you said something that really stood out to me. How many times when speakers come here do you take the extra step to connect with them, to get their email, to send a follow-up email and say, hey, loved what you said today, ba ba ba. you know. It's just kind of a way to say, remember me. Because networking is key. It is who you know. It's, mm, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. That's the thing that I had to start saying. You may know me, but do I know you? You know what I mean? And so that's the thing that really makes a difference. And networking is so key. Yeah. Going, oh, yeah. So to, to kind of speak to both you and what you both said, I am very grown. And with every, <laughs> with every job that I get or new opportunity that I get, I am scared to death. People don't understand that. Like, I'm scared. I'm fearful. But you know what I say? <clears throat> in spite of your fear, you do it anyway. Because what's the worst thing that could happen? 
right? You're going to put your best foot forward and you're going to try to do it. If it doesn't work out, you move on to the next thing, but you tried your best. Never say no to an opportunity because you deemed yourself unworthy or put that label on yourself. You have to believe in yourself, even if you're scared. I'm not, fear is a real thing, right? But despite the fear, you have to be willing to step out and take chances. And, and so with the networking thing, don't miss an opportunity each and every time because you think, oh, I'm too nervous to speak to that person, or I'm too scared, or they're gonna think I'm this. No, yeah. because you're absolutely right. You have to lean into every relationship, whether it's your professors here, whether it's your internship jobs or that first job, never leave those opportunities without making a meaningful connection with someone. Because those are the things you're going to need to stay employed. Yeah. Even, and even your professors here, you know, you really need to make sure that they know you. Five years from now, if you need a recommendation, right, nurture these relationships. They have contacts too. Right? So you want to nurture every relationship that's connected to you and your career as much as possible because you never know. I mean, I have students that I mentor reach out to me years. I just hired as a production assistant one of my uh, intern students from 10 years ago. Um, and she's incredible. You know what I mean? But we are, we stay, we've stayed connected over the years. So you just, it's good to have those relationships. But just, just, you know, it's just, it, and fear is a real thing. It, it is real, but you just have to kind of figure out a way to rise above it. You have to try. You have to try. I mean, and someone may be rude to you. Someone may be nasty to you. Someone may not return your email or phone call. But so what? You tried, and just keep it moving. Don't take it personally. It's not personal, right? People out there who you want to connect to who can help you, they are people too. They have families, they have parents, they may have, be ha unhappy in their job, they may just, just broke up with somebody in a bad relationship, who, maybe they don't have a Valentine for Valentine's Day, you know, I mean, I do, but you know. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, you never know. So I always say give people grace. If someone doesn't get back to you, don't, you know, because a, a student reached out to me so long ago and we never met and I did not follow up. Right. I didn't respond or I did respond, but then he wanted to get together. And like maybe a year later, I got the nastiest email. <laughs> well, I mean, life happens. I forget things as much as I help. I love helping students, but I just something happened and I missed it. But you don't want you want to give grace and let it go. But. But I say that when you adopt that of not taking it personally, it allows you to kind of remove the fear. Don't worry about their, what their reaction is. Don't worry if you're gonna say the right thing or the wrong thing. Just try, just try. You never know, you never know. So any other questions? I know you had a question, do you wanna ask your question? I don't remember what it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's an issue for me too. I mean, I get what you're saying, and it's a big reason why I left news and why I like working for myself. Um, because when it comes to, I, I like the freedom to create my own content because I can cover what I want to cover, I can talk about what I want to talk about, but news. Is a business you know what I mean they're sponsors it's corporate all those things come into play and then you have news managers that are making decisions that is based on their experiences right so if you have a room full a table full of white men that are making decisions about what goes on the news then what's their experience they may not see you always hear about diversity we need diversity diversity you may see diversity on air someplace now, but what about in who, and even with women, like what's going on with who's making the decisions? So all of that comes into play. And then lastly, what also comes into play is because it's a business, they care about people watching. So what's going to get the most 
reaction? What a reaction? What's going to bring the biggest viewership? Like I was so upset about the extensive coverage of Queen Elizabeth's death. N listen, for however you feel about her, it was too much across the board with all that's going on in this country, right? For, for all the news media to put the resources that they did into this woman who, who had the history, you know, that <laughs> the royals did in, you know, in England, it's like, it was a bit much for me. But those are the, but the numbers, the people that were watching were off the chart. And so that's why they covered. They say, who's tuning in? Who's what? Look at these numbers. That's why Trump got so much coverage early on before he became president. He was just this enigma, right? It was just like, oh, I just love the crazy stuff he's saying. Let's keep, co let's cover him, let's cover him, let's cover him. I believe the news media helped get him elected as president because they put so much coverage on him. So that's why you see everything not getting covered. That's the simple answer. You're welcome. Question, if, you could, if they could have one takeaway from here, what is the one thing that you think that they have to do? Is it thinking about themselves as a brand before they head into the market? Like how they want to approach you know, their employers, is it having, knowing exactly what it is you want, even though that might change later, yeah. they have an answer ready. Like what is the, cause like I know when you were asking him what he wants to do, I tell students all the time, you need to craft that. It doesn't mean you have to live by that for the rest of your life, right. but you should have an answer. What is the takeaway that you can give? I mean, yeah, you definitely want to, if you're, you want to be bolder, right? We're not going to be, everybody who's shy here, shy no more after this day, right? Shyness is out the window. So now when you have opportunities, you know, you're going to reach out to people, tag them, DM them, you know, don't be, you know, weird about it, but you know what I mean? <laughs> you're going to reach out to people, you're going to be bold, yes. But if you prepare yourself for if someone hits you back or if you go up to somebody and they ask you a question, I say to young people all the time, no matter what you want to do, learn yourself, know who you are, know what you stand for, know what issue, what you, how you feel about issues, how you feel about life, certain things. Know before you're, I, I always say this, and this is an extreme, but I, I think it makes the point. This microphone is all over the place. It makes the point. Um, <laughs> If you don't want to end up in a situation before you have sex to decide in that moment whether or not you want to protect yourself, what kind of protection you're using, if you want a baby, all those things. It's an extreme example, but life is the same. You need to know, do I want to have a baby right now? Do I want to, you know what I mean? Do I want to catch whatever, you don't want to decide in that romantic moment these things, you already want, and if I have a baby, am I having an abortion or am I having it? You need to think about the things that could happen in your life before they happen. It's the same with your career. You just gotta sit and really put time into thinking about where you are right now. And as Professor Payton said, it could evolve, but right now, what do you want to do? What's that dream job? Start with that, right? If I could do anything, this is what I want to do and this is what I want to be doing. I mean, look, I started out hard news. I'm working with a production company and I'm a content creator. I didn't see none of that coming, but it's what I'm doing and I love it. So you don't know where you're going to go, but you want to right now be equipped in your mind with who you are and what you want. Take a moment. Think about that, not just with your career, but everything, because life happens fast. You want to think about these things. But with your career specifically, know who you are and be confident in that. Even if it's like, I don't know what I want to do, but I do know I like this, this, and this, right? Even if you don't know, be confident in not knowing, right? But, but have an answer. Inter people who interview, uh, you know, future employers, they like people who have a confidence about themselves and they like people who just know who they are. Even if they ask you a question, you're like, you know, I don't know, but, you know, fill in the blank. I hope that's helpful with the one thing to leave them with. Can I sneak in one more question? Yes. What makes an intern stand out and, you know, <coughs> when they're there in the, like, what are some tips for when they get that first thing? Yes. I would say, this is when you want to, you want people to know who you are. 
You know what I mean? You want them to remember you. So you want to ask a lot of questions on in interns. You want to be that person that's going above and beyond. When they ask you to do something, once you get that done, if you have time, don't sit around. Hey, can I do something else? And then talk to the people that are there. Go around to different people that work there. Talk to them, get to know them, ask them questions about their, you know, do they like this job, about, you know, this business. Ask a lot of questions. Be early, leave late if you can, volunteer yourself for extra opportunities, ask if you can, and ask, make sure you advocate for yourself. I had an intern come to me one time and she was in tears on her last day because she didn't get to do this and she didn't get to do that, but she didn't ask. If you want to be on camera, if you want an opportunity to just test some things out, sit on set, write this, go on a shoot, ask about it right advocate for yourself that's important too. make sure that you're getting what you want out of the internship Does that help yeah. okay great. i hope that helps any other quick questions for anybody that can stay <laughs> oh boy that's a hard question uh i would have to say it, it, i would say the show probably that's my favorite is the tom joyner morning show which is a, was a radio show that was my absolute favorite you should look that up. It was a great job. <laughs> okay, guys, I want to thank you. I want you guys to take a moment to thank Miss Me for coming. Thank you.